Welcome to Golden Software's video training for Surfer. Surfer is a versatile gridding, contouring, and surface mapping software package. In this video, I will cover displaying a map in the 3D view. To display a map in a 3D view, select the Map in the Contents window. On the View page in the Properties window, click the 3D View button in the 3D View field. The input grids from grid-based layers are rendered as surfaces in the 3D view. Base, post, and class post layers are rendered as 3D points, 3D polylines, 3D polymesh, and raster textures. Raster base layers and contour lines are overlaid on the surfaces as raster textures. Point cloud layers are displayed as 3D points only. Lastly, contour lines can be rendered as 3D vector polylines by checking the box next to the Contours object in the Vector Data group of the Contents window. The 3D view window only displays layers that are visible in the map in the plot window, so you can remove an element from the 3D view by unchecking it in the contents window or switching to the plot view and unchecking it in the contents window. The contents window of the 3D view contains the environment object as well as all surface and vector objects. Surfaces are generated from the grids in the map and vector objects are generated from the post and contour layers in the map. Below is the axes section. The environment object controls the properties for the 3D view. On the general page in the properties window, you can change the display of the background behind the map. You can add vertical exaggeration to the map and change the vertical exaggeration back to the default by clicking Reset Vertical Exaggeration. Add a water level at a specific Z value. On the camera page, you can control the properties for the camera, which is the focal point of the view. Here you can change the field of view, which affects how close or how far you are from the map, the position of the camera, which controls where the map is located in the view, and the target coordinates, which control the coordinate location of where the camera is aimed. The position and target coordinates automatically update as you use the commands in the view section of the ribbon bar, but the environment object does not need to be selected to use these commands. In walk mode, the mouse or keyboard control how we move across the surface so a surface is needed to enter this mode. Some of the controls include dragging the mouse up to move forwards, dragging the mouse down to move backwards, dragging the mouse left to rotate left, dragging the mouse right to move right, and holding down the mouse wheel while dragging up or down to decrease or increase your elevation from the surface. You can save all of the settings on the camera page by clicking the 3D View, Home, Set Home command, and then you can return to those settings by clicking the 3D View, Home, Go to Home command. At any time, if you like the way your view looks, you can click the 3D View, Tools, Copy to Clipboard command to copy the current view to your clipboard for pasting into another document window in Surfer, or for pasting into another application like Word or PowerPoint for reports or presentations. Export your model to a 2D image by clicking the Export Image button or click Export 3D to export into the interactive 3D PDF format. Add surfaces, axes, points, and contours, rotate around your model, change lighting and model display style, and more. On the lighting page, you can control the lighting settings for the view. In addition to the lighting model, you can change the light position and the light colors. In the 3D symbol section, the object lighting property is selected by default to enable the lighting to illuminate and cast shadows on point vector data as it does on the surface. When this property is unchecked, shadows on 3D symbols remain static. The surfaces group controls the properties for all surface objects in the 3D view. The Surface Quality property controls the resolution of the surface. The default surface quality is 50. 
so half of the grid nodes are being used to create the surface. When surface quality is set to 100, the surface is displayed at the full grid resolution. The texture resolution properties control the appearance of the surface overlay textures. The texture width is the number of pixels used to render the texture overlays in the X direction. The texture height is the number of pixels used to render the texture overlays in the Y direction. The individual surface objects contain properties that control what overlays are displayed on the surface and whether the surface itself is displayed. In the Textures to Display section in the Properties window is a list of available texture overlays. By default, each surface shows the texture from any map layer that uses the same grid file as the surface and the textures from any base or post layers. The overlay textures do not have any 3D view properties. To change the appearance of the overlays, modify their properties in the Plot window. You can uncheck any of the texture overlays to remove them from the view. In the Surface Options section is a checkbox for hiding or displaying the surface. Unchecking Show Surface Background hides the surface. If you have a texture like a color relief layer showing, unchecking this option will only affect the view if the layer is partially transparent. Unchecking the Post layer will remove the raster texture overlay from the surface, but the 3D points will remain. The Vector Data group allows you to change the properties of vector objects, such as the 3D points in the post layer. In the Properties, you can change the Z-coordinates column and point density and change all the properties of the symbols. Point Cloud and Base Layers will have their own properties in this section. The next group in the contents is the Axes group. Select an axis in the Axes group to change its properties. The General page has options to change the look of the axis as well as the ability to add an axis title. You can also control the tick mark properties such as min, max, and spacing on the ticks page. Add tick mark properties and grid line properties on the ticks page. Label properties are controlled on the labels page and axis scaling is controlled on the scaling page. Turn on a color scale for a layer by selecting Color Scale in the Contents window and then check the box next to the layer you would like to see the color scale for in the properties. Edit the properties of a color scale, including its location, by clicking the color scale in the Contents window, then editing its properties in the Property Manager. All aspects of the color scale are customizable. Turn off a color scale by unchecking it in the Contents window. Lastly, in the 3D view, we can create, edit, play, and record fly-throughs. A fly-through moves the camera along a path specified by the vertices of a vector object. To create a fly-through, click 3D View, Fly-Through, Create Edit. In the Flight Path Editor, select the polyline or polygon to use as the flight path by selecting an existing base layer from the Input Vector Path drop-down list, or click the Browse button to load a new vector file like a DXF or shapefile. There is a base layer with a polyline in it in the plot window, so the polyline in that base layer can be selected. When a polyline or a polygon from a vector file or base layer has been selected, the vertices of the polyline or polygon are displayed in the keyframe list. You can click any of the column headers to sort the entries in ascending or descending order by that column. In the Position section, you can decide whether to position the camera a specific elevation above the surface, or at a specific absolute elevation. The Z values in the keyframe list update when the position settings are changed. In the animation section, you can determine how long the fly-through will be and how high the resolution will be. The higher the frames per second, the smoother the fly-through. 
The time values in the keyframe list update when the animation settings are changed. In the Camera Aim section, you can specify where the camera is focused during the fly-through. You can set this to a long path to keep the camera facing forward as you travel along the path, constant direction to keep the camera pointing in a specific direction as you travel along the path, or constant point to keep the camera pointing at a specific location as you travel along the path. The heading and pitch values in the keyframe list update when the camera aim settings are changed. Once you've set everything in the Flight Path Editor, click Preview to perform the fly-through and reopen the Flight Path Editor, or click OK to save these settings and close the Flight Path Editor. To edit a fly-through, click 3D View, Fly-Through, Create Edit. The Flight Path Editor will open with the same settings you previously set. To play a fly-through, click 3D View, Fly-Through, Play. To record a fly-through, click 3D View, Fly-Through, Record. In the Save As dialog, specify the file path and name to save the recording to, then click Save. The fly-through will play as it is being recorded. This concludes the video training for view maps in the 3D View in Surfer. If you have any additional questions, please contact Golden Software.